Thank you, my lovely quail. Thank you for your wonderful contribution to the garden with your beautiful, beautiful compost. These nitrogen-rich nuggets have been aged under the other cage that we no longer have quail in, and I am harvesting it. This is over a year old, and it is unfortunately solidified into a solid mat, and I can't quite break it up easily to sprinkle onto my corn for fertilizer, so I'm going to fill it up this bucket up with water and use it as a liquid fertilizer. Making some boop soup for my corn. You can tell it's alive with microbes, so I don't think I'm gonna let this sit very long. I'm just gonna give it a good stir and get those hard pieces softened up and then I'm just gonna apply it right away so that those microbes are still alive and thriving when I add them to the corn. Y'all, please don't tell the kids I'm using their shovel to mix up my poop soup. <laughs> all right, so I've got all the big chunks pretty much broken. A couple of little pieces still left. I'm gonna go put this right in the cornfield. <laughs> when your arthritis and carpal tunnel make carrying this heavy bucket impossible without a good handle, you improvise with a padded envelope to assist me. Oh, I'm gonna have to take baby steps and stop off and to walk down there. Whew. What I do for my plants. You can see the corn has taken off since the rain we finally have gotten. But in that fast rapid growth, I'm also seeing some yellowing, which means I need to get this nitrogen fertilizer on them really fast. Corn is a very heavy feeder and needs lots of nutrition in its growing season. I almost feel like I should have gotten a soup ladle <laughs> I think Ryan would have been more upset than the boys being upset with the shovel use. <laughs> but what he doesn't know doesn't hurt him. So I'm just side dressing this. It will feed into the soil over time and give them a nice boost of nitrogen. All right. Miss Celsey came out here and she said, why don't you just pour it? And she's right. So I just poured it down the side of these two rows and that used up the last of it i got those two rows and i got a little bit on this row so i'm gonna have to make another bucket to get these middle sections they don't have as much corn growing in them the seed didn't take as well so it won't take that much more and then i had to thin my okra and i was feeling very guilty pulling out little baby okra so I pulled out the roots as best as I can and I'm going to put them in a cup of water <laughs> and maybe save some baby okra to plant somewhere else. The last time I thinned the okra was a couple of weeks ago and I actually put those tiny okra into a cup of water and the roots are growing in that water. So it does work. I will, I will hopefully be able to do that with some of these okra and plant them somewhere. I don't know where, but if anybody is local and wants some okra baby plants, come and get them free. I'll give them to you if you've got somewhere to plant them. I, I have such a hard time thinning plants. <laughs> One thing I love about my Duluth garden overalls, it's not just the adorable gnomes, bunnies, and chickens but it's the pockets so what does your pockets have let's see what I have in my pockets <laughs> that's right somebody was dead hitting marigolds without anything to put them in 
and they got put in one of our many, many pockets. My goodness, it's a bunch of marigold seeds. This is much better. Got everything situated. So we've got our adult roosters, adult pullets. Most of them are going into this transport cage today. They're being sold. And then we got our little one month olds growing out over here. So that way everything is close together and easy to take care of because we did have them all kind of spread out. So this is much nicer. Daddy's coming. It's dinner time. Can you tell the baby is a chirp, 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 and when it's dinner time? My old man rooster, my original Americana naked neck, was getting picked on by the new naked neck rooster. So he got to be free range, and he's liking it. So, he's okay now. They were fighting pretty hard, though. And it was unfair. It was not nice. Because he's an old man. And he's so sweet. And Mama, you are... I don't know how she's not had babies. I guess she's not bred. I mean, any pig experts tell me why her belly seems like it's still growing? <laughs> if she doesn't have any babies in there, why is she fatter every day? So, I guess... Bowser's fatter every day, too. <laughs> Him's growing. Am I feeding them too much? I don't know. They get lots of pasture grass, as you see. Bowser's eating grass. And they get hay. And they get a little bit of grain every day. So, I mean, I didn't feel like I was giving them too much. I just heard something behind me. Hello. <laughs> you kind of scared me a little bit. I, I didn't hear you walk up. And then all of a sudden I heard crunch right behind me. What are you doing, friendship? You think I have bread? No. I don't. I didn't bring any food in here. You know it's feeding time though, don't you? Oh, baby, those flies. Don't worry. Daddy's, Daddy's got all the tricks for the flies right now, so you should be getting some relief soon. Poor baby. They've had a topical application of a fly meds. We've done, we've now done all of the other things that Ryan set out for fly predators and fly traps. So hopefully it'll be better really quick because these poor cows. It's like the flies are attracted to cows more than any other animal on the farm and I don't understand that and I've never had this many flies until I had cows. I guess it's like the dry nature of goat pellets. They don't attract a lot of fly larva production and chickens will eat the fly larva that is attracted to their poop and pigs will eat the larva that's attracted to their poop so it keeps the numbers down on those types of animals but cows don't eat larvae and they have very wet poop so it's a very attractive thing to a fly Not a bad way to start off the blackberry season. The only thing I wish is that I can make the season last longer. I did see in one of the garden groups I'm in where somebody said that they had an ever-bearing blackberry. But when I asked what the cultivar was, she didn't remember. Um, if any of you have any idea what it might be, or if you know of an ever-bearing blackberry, let me know because that is something I definitely would love to have on the homestead. We all know that blackberries are a sign of spring. 
but I'd love to have that sign of spring continue on like the raspberries do. These raspberries will just keep on putting on fruit all summer long, all the way till it's freezing. <laughs> Do you guys ever add anything to your to-do list right after you finish doing it? That way you can feel good about yourself by marking it off. Guilty as charged.